And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. So here's the question. Since we're all in such a loving spirit around the holidays, do you think that Apple, Microsoft, and Google, and the other Internet giants pay their fair share of taxes? I don't. And in fact, I've been hammering this point for two books now. And strangely enough, Rose, Charlie Rose, interviewed Apple CEO Tim Cook, who was as slithery a snake as Obama. As Obama lies about everything, so does Tim Cook, in my appreciation and opinion. Tim Cook tries to slither out of the tax avoidance of Apple as asked by, of all people, the number one chief liberal in the media, if you can separate them from each other, and it's very hard to do, Charlie Rose. You have to listen to 22 and 21 on the Savage Nation. But here's what they concluded. Apple is engaged in a sophisticated scheme to pay little or no corporate taxes on $74 billion in revenues held overseas. That is total political crap. There's no truth behind it. Apple pays every tax dollar we owe. What I told them and uh, what I'll tell you and, and the folks watching tonight is we pay more taxes in this country than anyone. Well, they know that, and you should because of how much money you make. Well, that I don't deny that. I, I, we happily pay but it. you also I'm have not... more money overseas probably than any other we American We do because, company. as I said before, two-thirds of our business is over there. Yeah. But and why so don't you bring that home is the question. I'd love to bring it home. Why don't you? Uh, because it would cost me 40% to bring it home. And I don't think that's a reasonable thing to do. This is, a, this is a tax code, Charlie, that was made for the industrial age, not the digital age. It's backwards. It's awful for America. It should have been fixed many years ago. It's, it's past time to get it done. Now you know how Apple CEO Tim Cook got his job and keeps his job. He's as good at it as uh, Barack Obama at his job which is called spinning the truth. The plain fact is, despite all the rhetoric coming from the communists and the Democrat Party, including the, the ones who are running for the office of the presidency, you know and I know that the major corporations like Apple don't pay their fair share. Oh, they pay what they have to pay, but they rigged the tax code as far as I'm concerned. They say, oh, it's the tax code. They wrote the tax code. In fact, the last I checked, talking about Microsoft now, and I could be mistaken, Microsoft hired over 1,000 former IRS officers to rewrite their own tax laws so they would pay as little as possible. You say, well, it's just business. No, it's not just business. It's monkey business. Number one. Number two. Number two is this. If Trump wins, and I think he will, my career will have been worth the struggle. This nation has been very good to me. I have struggled as an immigrant son from the day I could remember, five years of age, I was working, selling comic books on the streets of the Bronx, used comic books. Didn't bother me. I love making a few cents here and there. I learned the work ethic from the street up. And the nation has rewarded me despite 20 years of being subverted by the communist left with affirmative action, who gave jobs to totally unqualified morons instead of to this genius, Michael Savage. But they actually did me a favor. And so in the end, because they couldn't defeat me, the country has been good to me, and I want to save it from further de uh, de demolition by the Democrat Socialist Islamist Party. And I frankly believe that Trump will win. As you know, the latest polls are showing something that the major media won't disclose to you. The latest polls are showing that even amongst African Americans who you would think wouldn't support him, there's huge support, and I'll tell you why. It's because they, they, don't, they don't want to be bs anymore. They'll take any politician who doesn't lie to them and they also know he's not owned by anybody they know no one's pulling his strings they like his independence they trust him more than they trust the communists in the democrat party that's a shocker to old hillary clinton the harridan who thinks she's going to win she's going to be destroyed by the way if it ever comes down to trump versus her in a fair election and i i emphasize the word fair she loses 70 30 but i have deep fears that it'll never get there very deep fears that the corrupt Democrat Republican machine and whoever runs it will never let Trump get to the finish line. That's what I fear. And I want, I don't even want to go down that road. But I'm working as hard as I can to disclose what really is going on in this country on a daily basis to give back to this nation the opportunities that it has afforded me, an immigrant son.
That's the opening to the show. The phone number is 855 I really don't want any calls on this. I'm just going to ramble on for a while and give you discursive ideas on so many topics that I, there's no coordination to them. There's no sequence to what I'm saying to you. It's a collection of thoughts at the end of the year. So here's another thought for you to think about. I was watching a TV show last night about kids with a, an illness. I forget the name of it. They have OCD, and they also blurt out anything that's on their mind. What's that called? Um, there's a word for it where they scream and say things that's on their mind. They can't control it. Robert, what's the name of that illness? Tourette syndrome, and it was very sad to watch because I've known children like that when I was young. We had friends like that, and we, we thought that, you know, they were sick, something wrong with them. It's tragic to watch these boys struggling to control their emotions in, in methods that, that they're teaching them, and this was in England or Scotland somewhere. They teach them how to control it when they feel it coming on. It's almost like an epileptic seizure. They know it's coming on, they know they're going to blurt something out that's inappropriate. And they try their hardest, these poor little kids, to stop it, and they can't. It's heartbreaking to watch. And I was, was wondering about Tourette's and OCD. And then I was thinking something broader. It's a semi-comedic and almost embarrassing to admit. I think that most talk show hosts who are good, in a way, suffer radio Tourette's. I've, I've hinted at this before. Because unless you're willing to blurt out what you really feel, you're going to die in this business. You may as well just be working for a... It's just it's something else. If you're going to watch everything you say and you're going to check every word that you say and you're not going to really express yourself honestly, you're not going to last in this business. You'll never get into the inner circle and you'll never last, moreover. People don't want to hear more BS because they hear it all day long. So they listen to the radio. What do they hear? I have no makeup. I have no flashing lights. I have no uh, stockings and shoes and lipstick to use and every second of breaking news flash. Every, how could there be so much breaking news on Fox News when there's no news? Every second, another, another shot in your eye. Breaking news, breaking news, breaking news, breaking news. I think they've abused it. It's like the rat in the cage. How many times can you, can you shock it? But having said that, and having just blurted out what I really felt about Fox News, I'd like to go into that subject a bit. I actually like to hear from parents who have children who have Tourette's what it's actually like. What is it? Where does it come from? What's the thinking on this? Are there any psychiatrists or doctors or neurologists who specialize in this area? And by the way, what is the difference between Tourette syndrome and someone who simply tells you what the heck he thinks? <laughs> I really like to know the difference. What is the difference between expressing what you really think, for example, about a politician or a situation and a kid who has Tourette syndrome? Maybe it's just a magnified form of it, I ask myself. And I don't really know the answer to it. This is in no way an, an attempt to denigrate the serious problem. As I started this little monologue or observation, I told you, my heart went out to these boys. You could see them struggling to control themselves. And you ask yourself, what the heck is this about, you know? Anyway, that's another thought. 855-407-282. Yesterday I talked about the rape and murder of little girls by ISIS. It went over everyone's head. No one, No one cared. I had the leader of an army trying to fight them in the Assyrian army, not a word. Zero. Nothing. Not, not a word from the great champion of women. Hillary Clinton, champion of women. Not one word about the kidnap and rape of eight-year-old girls that's going on on an industrial scale in the Middle East. Not one word from that liar. How's that for Tourette's? How's that for Radio, radio Tourette's? She's a liar and a crook. How could you vote for her? How's that for Radio Tourette's? Not one word from the woman who says she is a champion for women. Not one word about ongoing kidnap, slavery, and rape of little girls, Yazidis in this case. I guess they don't count because it's a funny name, you know. After what's a Yazidi? How many Yazidis could vote for her in America? Really, how many Yazidis do you know? I, mean, I eat Yazidi and marinara sauce, I admit that. But no, I never met a Yazidi. So, hey, what's the difference? There aren't that many Yazidis. To vote for it's probably there's more Zidi in America than there are Yazidis. So Hillary does the calculation. She realizes that there's more Ziti than Yazidi. So why care about rape, murder, kidnapping of little girls in the Middle East? They can't vote for her. And we know she's a woman of pure and absolute conscience. And all you women who would vote for her, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. If you have any shame, you ought to be ashamed of yourself lining yourself up with someone like her. Oh, I don't care that she's a Democrat. That doesn't bother me at all. There used to be Democrats who loved America. 
oh, there really used to be um, Democrats who were nationalists, who were uh, in favor of protecting the people of this country, who didn't sell themselves out to foreign entities. Yeah, there used to be Democrats like that, if you can believe it. They weren't even all communists. I remember them. We had uh, one of them in this campaign. And they, they destroyed him, former Secretary of the Navy. Again, I forget the gentleman's name. Robert, what was it again? I always forget his name because that's what they did to him. He ran as a Democrat. He was in the first Democrat debate. He, Jim Webb, great man. And they destroyed him. They made a mockery of his, na of his, pa of his nationalism. That's what your Democrat Party has become. Nothing. Zero. Worthless. So anyway, to go back to the beginning... I want to talk about the Tourette's. I want to talk about companies like Apple not paying their fair share, in my opinion. I want to talk about all these topics and a few more. Here's another one for you if you don't have enough. Are you ready for this one? Those of you who don't know what Sharia law is and what Muslims really want to do to you in this country once they gain a certain foothold. Those of you who are stupid enough to think that the Muslims are just like other oppressed minorities who came here, you morons, you, you idiots. You psychos who don't know anything about history. Are you ready for this? The filthy, tiny, oil-rich Asian nation of Brunei has banned all public Christmas celebrations from tree lighting to the donning of Santa hats and threatened offenders with up to five years in prison, the Sydney Morning Herald reports. Now, what you may, may not know is that the country is 32% Christian. Non-Muslims are 32% of the population, but the Muslim fascists who run the tiny oil-rich Asian nation of Brunei have banned all public Christmas celebrations. The ban was first enacted last year to control the act of celebrating Christmas, which could damage the beliefs of the Muslim community. The Ministry of Fascist Religious Affairs said in a statement published in the Brunei Times. It gets even better for all of you Muslim lovers out there. According to the statement, Christmas celebrations violate the penal code, prohibiting the propagation of religions other than Islam to Muslims. It's such a fabulous religion, Islam, that they're afraid that if the children and the people, as a matter of fact, who are Muslims see Christians expressing kindness to each other, it may kind of spread to their religion and undermine it. Some may think that it is a frivolous matter and should not be brought up as an issue. A group of local imams told the Borneo Bulletin, the Australian newspaper reports, quote, but we must keep it away as it could affect our Islam Islamic faith. How do you like that? The announcement was met by boycotts and protests at Sultan Hassani, Balkia's hotels in the U.S. and U.K. Interesting. What hotels does the Sultan of Brunei own? Here in the U.S., I'd like to post a list of them on the Savage website, michaelsavage.com. I'd like all of you to post all of the Sultan's hotels on every one of your Facebook accounts and make sure not a penny goes into that fascist pig's pockets. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. But here's what they concluded. Apple is engaged in a sophisticated scheme to pay little or no corporate taxes on 74 billion in revenues held overseas. That is total political crap. There's no truth behind it. Apple pays every tax dollar we owe. Notice he, he says we owe. It's nice to have friends in the White House and the IRS. I mean, you, then you'd pay all the tax dollars you owe also, especially if the tax code is written so you only pay a certain amount and not the full amount. The day they pay 39% is the day I'll raise the flag. You know what I'm saying? Hotels owned by the Sultan of Brunei. Aha, UK, he owns the Dorchester. Never go there. Uh, in the U.S., the Beverly Hills Hotel. I'm never going there again. I'm not going there again. I, could say, I know it was boycotted because of a gay thing. Now I'm never going there again. I'm going to be in Beverly Hills this weekend. I'm not going there. I go there for coffee. It's like I went there for two coffees and a piece of cake. It cost forty dollars. It was beautiful though because nobody was in the in the in the Polo Lounge. I like going there when no 